everybody, Keith Nelson at the Trombone Shop at Schmidt Music back with another instrument review for you. So today I've got a really great vintage horn that I haven't had a chance to spend a lot of time with before, the Con 32H. Um, this is the model that was built from mid-30s to the late 1950s. This particular one's from 1953. So I'm going to do a bunch of playing on it and then do a little bit of talking so we can learn a little bit more about this particular horn. I'm going to be playing all of this on a box 6.5 AL. <laughs> So the Khan 32H is a really interesting instrument. So this was designed by the great Khan designer, Jake Burkle, uh, back in the 1930s. Um, Mr. Burkle was somebody who really felt that the uh, the conical design of trombones, you know, something that, for example, was really well utilized in the tuning and slide models, was really the best design for the trombone. Now, we know that there are, of course, a lot of, you know, issues, weight issues, other things with the tuning and slide. And in the 1930s, when we started to see the preference of the players to move away from the tuning and slide, um, Mr. Burkle came up with the 30H and the 32H instead as his way to try to balance those two here. So, the 32H is a dual bore horn. Now, it's a 500 bore, 522 bore <laughs> dual bore, which is really unique. Usually when we see the dual bore, especially on the small bore tenors, we're looking at like a like a 500, 508, or you know, 480, 490, something like that. So that's a huge spread for the small bore tenors. And besides that, you know, everything in all of the the, the other tubing outside of the hand slide, the you know, the hand slide crook and the, you know the neck pipe tuning slide, everything here is as conical as possible. And what that does is it gives it a little bit different feel. It, it slots really differently. When I talk to modern trombone makers about the dual bore hand slides, one of the things they talk about is the difference in the slide and how things lock in place. And I think you really feel that with this instrument. You know, things lock in really nicely, but it's it's not to the point where you can't move between the partials. Everything is just kind of really where you expect you expect it to be. You know, that combined with the fact that I really like the sound of this horn. You know, I, I love the four H's, six H's. I always put them a little bit on the darker end. You know, a little bit more cordless sound, a little bit softer around the outside. In comparison, I think this has got a lot of the core, but a little bit more well-defined outside to the sound. And even though it has a seven and a half inch bell, it doesn't feel really small and compact. I feel like there's a lot of presence to the sound. One of the things the 32H was really renowned for during its time was the response playability in the upper register. It was a real favorite with a lot of the lead players at the time. And boy, getting a chance to put it through its paces, I can really understand why. You know, everything, all the partials in the upper range slot so well and so easily, and it's it, it really easy to move between them. You know, we get some horns where, you know, it feels like, you know, up to the eighth partial is great, and then you can get up in the eleventh, twelfth partial. They actually feel like things lock in. Sometimes moving between those different registers can be a little interesting. With this, it feels a lot more effortless. Um, it's 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 really interesting, and again, I can see why it was such a popular instrument for that kind of usage. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any experience with the thirty-two H, have any comments on what you heard, or have any questions, feel free to leave those comments below. If you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, think about subscribing to our channel. We'd really appreciate that. And you can always find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So thanks for watching, everybody.